Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Tom Stimulus uh, for today's uh, uh, cybersecurity Facebook Live uh, uh, hosted by the Virginia Small Business Development Center. And uh, today's topic is going to be cloud security. And when I put this topic down, I realized I don't think we've actually ever really talked about what is cloud. Uh, so I just want to spend a couple seconds on that. You know, uh, when you think about cloud, uh, there's there's two things. Really, uh, when someone says it's hosted in the cloud, what that really means is that their data is hosted in someone else's data center. Uh, and there's no magical cloud where all the data goes. Uh, it's just a sexy term that was created by salespeople to uh, sound better than saying we're hosting your data in someone else's data center. Um, now, the purpose of cloud was really for scalability. And uh, if you think of a, a department store where, you know, nine months out of the year, they have a steady flow of traffic in and out. But then for the Christmas season, they have, you know, you have November, December, and January, their sales could, you know, double, triple, even quadruple in transactions. And they need that extra scalability. In the old days, they'd buy all these servers, sit them in their data center, and those things would be quiet for nine months out of the year. And it was a lot of money. Well, the scalability of cloud allows them to increase the requirements for those three months and then go back to a, a normal operating. So it was really giving up businesses the opportunity to scale on demand. Uh, but ultimately for us, uh, it means that we're putting our data instead of in our, our offices or our data center, we're putting it into a someone else's data center. And these data centers though, are go through uh, pretty strict requirements and security measures. So you feel that there are, um, you know, because their resources are better than ours or they have more resources or their this is what they do for their industry that they'll have a better grasp on overall security. And in most cases they do. So there's a lot of benefits uh, to, uh, to using the cloud. Big thing is, is, you know, you've got your data storage, uh, you pay, for the amount of storage that you're using uh, and only for that amount. And then you're paying for the ability to access it. So that gives you the flexibility where you can access your data from anywhere. Uh, if you have your data in, a, in your facility, then there are multiple different things that you have to do to enable to access that data, which would be uh, managing your identity and access management, installing virtual private networks um, on all of your remote employees. And uh, so when you have this in this public cloud, you have uh, the ability to rely on the provider who will provide you the access, the storage, the um, the ability to that. And overall, they provide you the, the security. A private cloud, which is basically what you would have if you had it in your data center, which or your data room for that matter, would be you'd be responsible for all of the ability for individuals to access that data. So for smaller companies that may not want to um, or may not even have the resources to spend on that capital expense, and uh, I'm not an accountant, but I will tell you that uh, there is a big difference between capital expenditures and operating expenditures or CapEx and OpEx. And if you talk to your accountant, I'm sure they'll tell you the same thing. Uh, there's depreciation and impacts your profitability. So a lot of organizations prefer to spend that OpEx uh, because it doesn't necessarily impact uh, their profitability in the same manner as CapEx or capital expenditures are. So when you go and you purchase all these services, all that falls under, or these servers, those or, or equipment that falls under capital expenditures, but cloud services fall under operating expenditures. So there are accounting uh, benefits that you'd have to talk to your accountant or you know to or your bookkeeper to fully understand. But I know there are different ways that that money is accounted for. So there's a benefit there, but also there are some risks. Uh, you know, security breaches. It, uh, lots and lots of very good companies that provide um, public cloud services have been breached. It's, uh, you know, it happens to everybody, uh, you know, especially the larger the organization, uh, the more challenges that they have to protect that data. Also, uh, you got to look at the monthly fees. Now, when you're a smaller company and you're paying out those monthly fees, 
uh, you know, there's a benefit to that because you don't have to purchase the equipment. But at some point, depending on how you grow, um, there's always that time that you need to sit down when you're doing your planning. Is it time for us to invest in our own equipment? Do we have the uh, requirements? Do we have the resources? Do we have the people to support our own infrastructure? Because the fees continue month after month. Um, they go up depending upon the amount of storage that you use. They go up on the basis of the applications that you use. Uh, also, in a lot of situations, the amount of data that you transfer back and forth is also um, calculated and charged for. So if you use Amazon Web Services, you get charged for uh, all different types of things. So it's very granular and it allows you to really control costs. But at some point, uh, you may exceed the value of, of that type of cloud service and you may wanna look at a different cloud service, which leads me to my next point. Um, there are multiple numbers of cloud services out there for all different types of, of all different types of services. So there's data storage and you've heard things like Dropbox or box.net. Uh, there's Google Drive. Uh, there's OneDrive with Microsoft Office. Uh, you know, which one's the best one? Um, that takes some time for you to figure out, you know, what type of industry you're in uh, and how you're gonna be using it. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is, is if you are in a regulated industry, um, which would be medical, financial, whatever, um, the privacy laws in the United States have changed significantly. And you're not allowed to necessarily store data outside of the United States. Now, in a public cloud environment, most of these large organizations and large cloud services have uh, data centers outside of the United States because they're global organizations or international organizations. So they cater to an international uh, audience. So therefore they're gonna have that data. Now, you've gotta make sure though, that if you are regulated, that this cloud provider can assure you that your data uh, will remain in the United States. If they can't provide that to you, then you may not be able to use that, uh, that cloud provider if you are using uh, what people consider regulated data. So PHI and all different types of PII. Um, and that's something that, so that you'll hear, you'll ask them about cross-border uh, controls. And, uh, and that includes Canada. I mean, there's a lot of companies that have data centers in Canada, but according to US uh, privacy laws for certain um, industries, you're not allowed to store data in Canada. So uh, it's just definitely something that you got to keep in mind, um, you know, and even though most of us don't do it, if you're looking at cloud services, whether that be software as a service or a platform as a service, you really want to read that end user license agreement because at small business levels, you don't really sign contracts. Uh, you're not like a very large organization. You're not going to sign a contract. It's going to be unique. It's going to be basically they're going to provide you a service for a certain fee. And in that fee, they're going to give you what they call a EULA or an end user license agreement. And in there, you're going to agree to certain things. Don't agree to them if you don't understand them. Uh, get with your lawyer, get with your uh, accountant, uh, or even a, a colleague that might have an understanding of, of how these end user license agreements work. Make sure you walk through them because you don't want to put your business at risk. You don't want to come out of compliance if you are regulated, but you also want to know where your data is going to be stored. And also in those end user license agreements, it clearly states where the, uh, the organization's security requirements stop and where your security requirements start. And that's a very important piece because a lot of these breaches occur where the user didn't know where their security requirements start. So with that, uh, I'm going to leave you with one last thing is when you, uh, you can uh, delegate responsibility, but you can't abdicate responsibility. So when you're thinking about that, when you're getting into the cloud or dealing with the cloud, try to remember that because ultimately the data belongs to you and the responsibility of protecting that data response uh, uh, relies on you and your staff as well. So that's it for today, everybody. Have a great Tuesday and we'll see you next week.